So this is part two, which came out today. We got Earthquake of Amplification. Smash to the ground, dealing damage in an area and cracking the earth. The cracks will erupt in a powerful aftershock after the duration, the same as the usual. Cracks created by the first eruption. Bef cracks created before the first one has erupted will not generate their own aftershocks. Okay, usually it does spread out. So I guess this is focused on rather than earthquakes spreading out in various directions and hitting things wherever the earth cracks. This is just the main eruption does more damage. Makes sense. We got Ethereal Knives of Massacre. Whoa. Fires 19 projectiles in a circle. Physical damage. I believe the main difference between that is that you do not get that many Ethereal Knives usually. This one is, I mean, being that it's in a circle, it's going to be worse for bossing, but way, 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 way better for mapping. That's cool. We got Explosive Con... A concoction of destruction. So it has added cold damage if you consume a charge from a sapphire flask, added lightning damage if you consume a charge from a topaz flask, and if you consume da a charge from a ruby flask you get crit multi, which is interesting because I believe the original you get fire damage instead. You consume one charge per projectile fired from one flask of each valid type if possible. So you're basically shifting between which one you're going to be getting the damage from. Oh, and it has base fire damage, which I guess makes sense. Yeah, the Ethereal Knives of Massacre definitely sound really good for crowd control. Then we have two new explosive traps. Explosive Trap of Shrapnel. There was a trap that creates an explosion when triggered, dealing spell damage in an area. Okay. Number of small explosions occur within a secondary area around the trap in quick succession. That's the new part, is the extra small explosions rather than just the main one. Then we have Magnitude, which just makes one giant explosion. So, the normal explosive trap has a decent ex single explosion. This one has a slower massive explosion, and this one has a lot of other small explosions, too. We're finally getting two Winter Eyes. That is going to be very exciting for I know one of our uh, viewers really likes to use these. Or use Winter Eye Winter specifically. So, fire a single eye projectile which cannot damage enemies. Okay. When the eye dissipates or collides with terrain, it releases a fast spiral of shards. The shards will deal cold damage to enemies they impact. So usually, you deal damage with the shards and with the projectile either Eye of Winter projectile itself, but this one focuses more on dealing damage with the shards only. So rather than this being more AoE, it's more projectile based. So Eye of Winter of Transience, fire a single eye projectile which releases a large, releases a number shard. Okay, so rather than it just shooting out in all directions, it specifically is in a spiral with this. Which I think would be better because you can control that a bit more versus just random everywhere projectiles. And we had two that they teased, the uh, Firestorm of Meteors and the Firestorm of Pelting. Basically, they split our current Firestorm. Our Firestorm drops a large meteor and then has a uh, rain of uh, smaller meteors that come after. Uh, this has been split here for if you want to deal just the big meteor or just the small meteors. So the first one, there is no limit to how many firestorms can drop at once, but it is just the original meteor. And the second one does way less damage, and you can, but you can have 10 firestorms at once and it does a large number of bolts at a time. This is also a duration gem, just like the original, and it has impacts every 0 0.15 of a second. So this is basically if you want to hit a lot, and this is basically if you want to hit really, really hard once, which is cool. Honestly, I probably would change uh, my two bossing builds, the one for this league and the one for last league. Uh, 
this league, I had a Firestorm Saboteur, and last league, I had a uh, Unleashed Firestorm Hier Hierophant, I believe? Or is it an Inquisitor? I believe it was a Hierophant. Uh, I probably would use the Firestorm of Meteors for them, most likely, because bossing. We get the Flame Dasher Return, which is a real weird one, because it you travel much farther than normal forwards, and then you travel immediately backwards, and you create Burning Drown in both areas. I don't really know the value of having that, personally. Maybe if you want to use Fire or Flame Dash as an actual damaging skill, I guess it makes some sense. Uh, but I don't really see the value of that. If this was Frost Blink, I would understand that. Because Frost Blink often is used not just as a travel skill, but as a method of applying various cold ailments. So that would make some sense. But I don't really get why they want to do this. Maybe it's because, like, you can leap forward, deal damage, everything rushes towards you, and then you leap backwards. So, like, they they don't actually get to you in time. So, I mean, that's interesting, that's for sure. I'm sure there's some really cool way you could use it, but I have no idea what that would be. Though, it says on it specifically that uh, it repeats once. I wonder if you add Unleash... If you could make it repeat four times, or you can make it happen four times. So that means it would jump forward and back four separate times, so eight times, which would be kind of interesting. Uh, hit. How relevant are hit and run tactics? Hmm. Hit and run tactics are very relevant for damage over time builds. This is a damage over time skill. So that would make sense. You could move over to an area, damage everything, and then rush back. Uh, usually Flame Dash is considered a uh, travel skill, so people just use it to move around, and they like the damage on it, people just completely ignore. But here, it neither has a cooldown, nor does it have charges, and it just has a cast time. So this might actually i think you're right i think this is a hit and run tactic damaging skill rather than a just normal travel skill like it's usually meant to be pretty cool i would love to be able to use weird skills like travel skills a lot more to actually create damaging stuff you probably could have some cool ignite stuff for that too and being able to jump into a pack and then immediately jump back out does make a lot of sense because you'll be doing it fast enough that the monsters won't probably won't be able to hit you. That is pretty cool. We have Flame Surge of Combusting. Strikes enemies in front of you with a Surge of Flame. If this ignites an enemy, a large area of burning ground will be created under them. So, in this... With a normal Flame Surge, you cannot ignite with it, and then burning enemies you deal extra damage to. With this, you can ignite, and when you do, it causes burning ground. So, that's the main difference there, if you want to have it more as a ignite skill, or as a burning ground damage skill, rather than actually have it as a direct damage skill, because the normal Flame Surge can't really be used for for damage over time. So this is a good chance to use Flame Surge as a damage over time skill. Then we have Flame Blast. Flame Blast over here. Flame Blast of Celerity and Flame Blast of Contraction. So Flame Blast, channel up to build an explosion, which is released when you stop using the skill or automatically at maximum stages. The longer you channel, the larger the area effect and damage of the explosion. So that's all fairly normal. It looks like it has less stages because it only has three stages. I th believe that's a lot less than usual. I think it goes either to five or ten usually. So this one must build up a lot faster, but have a have less of a top end. And then contraction, 
instead of it growing in size and power, it grows, it decreases in size and grows in power. So it loses 0.2 of a meter in radius per stage, but it also gains 600% more spell damage for, per each stage. And it has 11 stages versus Celerity, which has 165% more spell damage per stage. So a little bit less than a fourth of the damage. It only has three stages. So this is probably a lot better for mapping. And this is better for, like, tr if you genuinely want to try and one-shot a boss, the Flame Blast Contraction is probably what that's meant for. Next, we have a Flicker Strike of Power. This, as far as I can tell, is just a Flicker Strike, but you use Power Charges. Simple as that. So, this will mean that instead of picking Raider every single time, or picking... Uh, Slayer, every single time you want to do Flicker Strike, you will actually get the chance to pick, let's say, an Assassin, which focuses on power charges. Or, heck, even an Occultist, which focuses on power charges. It'd be really interesting if you could uh, convert your Flicker Strike damage from just, like, whatever damage type that he... It just picks the damage type of your weapon, so if you were to do a Cold Damage Flicker Strike or a Chaos Damage Flicker Strike, Occultist would actually be a really cool option. We have Forbidden Rite of Soul Sacrifice, Lobs Exploding Projectile near the targeted location, extra projectiles, and extra projectiles towards enemies around you. Okay, so this one has Seeking stuff rather than just the normal one. Projectiles deal chaos damage based on your energy shield, casting the spell damages you, same as usual. So, I believe the main difference here is that this does more damage to you, but also fires up Fire projectiles at up to nine surrounding enemies, which is really good because there's no auto fire on the normal Forbidden Right. People just kind of have to target themselves. Which I mean, eh, I don't know. If this was, if you're doing a cast while channeling with, uh, let's say, Cyclone, then having it pulse out projectiles at surrounding enemies constantly would be honestly amazing. So that is kind of a cool concept, rather than just having it focused in a particular direction. This is probably a lot better for mapping than the original, which is probably a little better, better for bossing. Also, the original Forbidden Rite allows you to take, da uh, take your uh, skeleton's life as, as damage for this first, and then your life. But this one just just takes your life instead. Or, more importantly, it takes your energy shield, which is interesting. So technically, you would take no damage if you had no energy shield. But you also would not deal the extra base chaos damage. So, that's an interesting thought. We have our two Frost Bombs. So, the Frost Bomb of Instability is the one that uh, they teased originally. This is the Frost Bomb. It has no cooldown on this. Usually it's a 4 second cooldown. It does a lot less damage and does not apply... Uh, I believe it usually applies... Yeah, it applies cold exposure, exposure usually for dealing extra damage. But with this, if this is just a straight up damaging skill that you can use as a main skill because there's no cooldown. Which, I think it's great. I'd love to see Frost Bomb of Instability in Mines. Those would be really fun. We have Frost Bomb of Force Coming, which they have not shown yet. It's a crystal which lasts for a duration. When the crystal duration ends, it explodes, dealing heavy cold damage. Base duration is 3 seconds. Deals more damage per 0.1 second duration, deals more damage than ailments per 0.1 second duration. So you can either use less a less damage support to decrease the base duration and have it trigger faster, or you could use a more damage support, have it trigger much slower, but do way more damage. I like the duality there, being able to pick and choose which way you want to have it. And realistically, it has a 4 second cooldown anyways, so... You're, it's going to take some time to cast it. So even if you do increase the duration, like it's still pretty cool. Oh, we have Frost Blink of Wintry Blast, so that's 
that's what I was kind of talking about when we were looking at the flame dash is uh, I would want something like that sounds kind of cool if it was a frost blink specifically. Um, now that I realize it's more for like applying, it's more for a damaging scale, it makes sense rather than a travel scale, but interesting. Teleport to a location, damaging enemies in an area at both ends of the teleport, same as usual. Deals higher damage to chilled enemies, then removes chill from them. Cannot be supported by Unleash. So that's interesting. If this acts a whole lot like the original Flame Surge. With the original Flame Surge, based on whether something's burning or not, you deal more a lot more damage. With this, it's based on chill effect. So this, like Flame Surge, cannot cause the ailment that it that removes itself but if you have a strong chill effect that you're able to add via something then you would be able to deal a lot of extra damage potentially through using skitter bots for example skitter bots with uh let's think with probably hypothermia support and unbound ailments would give you like 30% chill effect on its own. So that would be pretty big hit if you specifically want to use it as a damaging skill. That is cool to see the travel skills get a chance to be damaging skills too. Because like technically they have damage already, but it doesn't matter. No one uses them like that. Frost Legion of Rallying. I'm not familiar enough with Frost Legion to be able to tell the difference between each one. Uh, the base Frost Legion is, it spawns a bunch of statues with step forward and attack once before vanishing. This seems to be more or less the same thing. Uh, rallying probably increases the cooldown recovery so that you can do it more often but it does less damage if i were to guess we have glacial cascade of fissure which basically allows your glacial cascade to work a little bit like the ori original earthquake where you deal damage in one area and then it kind of spreads out from there which is honestly pretty awesome there was a there was a Threshold Jewel, I think it was called Winter Burial, that did something very similar to this. So this is probably a callback to that to replace it, since they removed Winter Burial a long time ago. We have Glacial Hammer of Shattering. It guarantees a critical hit on your third strike. That's really cool. Does more damage against chilled enemies. And uh, has a lot of crit multi. That's cool, because you actually... You could completely ignore scaling critical strike chance and just scale critical strike multiplier and then use ruthless to make so ruthless and multi strike to make your last strike deal the most damage. So basically every third strike would be the big deal for this one. The big damage dealer. So you'd want to also have a lot of attack speed with that too might be good for a raider maybe it's strike skill so you can hit multiple things with it at a time which would be pretty nice because yeah you could you could strike three times in a row with multi-strike and then if you had ancestral call for example you would get hit two extra things so you would eventually you would essentially hit nine times per use if you were hitting two extra things too and each thing that got hit would be getting hit with a very strong crit. Ground Slam of Earthshaking. Slams the ground in front of you, creating a wide wave that travels forward and damages enemies with an increased chance to stun. I believe that's the same as usual. I'm not sure if it's the stun chance or the chance to hit things that are closer. That's the big deal here. I'm not going to guess at it too much because I'm not as familiar with it, so I'll leave that to the people who actually know ground slam a bit more oh i see something coming up that i'm excited for i'm just gonna skip ahead a little bit flame totem of ire holy flame totem of ire 
I love Holy Flame Totem. I've been thinking of doing Holy Flame Totems as my League starter, so this is kind of really exciting. Summons a Totem that channels a stream... That channels to fire a stream of flame at nearby enemies and creates an area of consecrated ground under the totem. So usually what it does is it fires flame projectiles, like really quickly, but this is an actual channeling skill. Modifiers to number of projectiles do not apply to the skill. Yeah, because it doesn't actually cause projectiles per se, which is why they pierce everything. The consecrated ground grants immunity to curses to you and allies is that that's the less part of the normal one uh so basically this acts as a channeling skill which allows you since it has the channeling tag on it it means that you now have a new method of scaling this because channeling skills have like their own set of special ways of scaling that are different from what is effectively a, t a projectile totem normally so this this is cool. I definitely would try, like, if I'm going to League Start Holy Totem, Holy Flame Totem, I'm going to try this at least. Whether it's going to be better than what I'm looking for or not, I don't know, but, I mean, why not try it? It also means that I could use, like, Infuse Channeling with it. And Infuse Channeling allows... Infuse Channeling allows, uh, as, like, the longer you channel, the more damage you deal. So that would allow you to scale up over time, which probably would be good for bossing specifically, versus normal Holy Flame Totems would just deal the same amount of damage always. I think this one is actually meant to ramp up, which is the way most channeling skills work. Then we have two new Ice Novas. Ice Nova Frostbolts. A circle of ice expands for the caster, same as usual. If the caster targets near their Frostbolt projectiles, it will expand from a number of those instead of those from a number of those projectiles instead. If this skill would repeat when cast this way, it will instead expand again from the same projectiles after a short delay. So this will expand from way more or frost bolts than the base one will, because the base one has been decreased in how many frost bolts it works with. I don't know if it even works with frost bolt anymore at all. So this is kind of to uh, expand on that functionality for those who actually really care about it. And then we have Ice Nova of Deep Freeze, which removes the uh, Frost Bolt synergy entirely. Just Circle of Ice expands on the caster. Straight up. Much higher chance to freeze. It has a bit more damage too. Same amount of radius. But this has like a massive, massive cheat freeze chance. So I imagine this is less damage than the main Ice Nova because it freezes as if dealing 400% more damage and has a 50% base chance to freeze. Then we have an Ice Spear of Splitting. Oh, this is like Splitting Steel. Launches a shard of ice that splits on hitting it terrain or enemies. After splitting, the projectiles are in a second form, which moves much faster and pierces through enemies. That's awesome. So this is a much more mapping focused one, which really focused on the projectiles and them hitting lots of things versus the main ice spear, which is completely crit focused of which this has no real crit basis. And that crit multi that you get from the main skill really uh, kind of shows the type of build that you end up making from it because most Ice Spear builds are like high, high, high crit builds, but this gives the chance to have, let's say, well, a Dead Eye. You could have like a Dead Eye with uh, a variety of uh, extra skill damp, extra projectiles and stuff. There's a lot of cool concepts there. Also, Ice Nova Deep Freeze, I was just thinking about it. It would be really nice to put this on a cast when stunned. So if you get stunned by something, it immediately triggers the Ice Nova, which has a high chance to freeze whatever's near you. So that gives you enough time to recover from the stun. That would be good for a lot of characters. I'm very, very interested in using that, and that There's a large chance that will become just a normal part of my repertoire. We have Icicle Mines. I kind of... I recognize these ones. So we have... A whole ton of different things that these change. The uh, 
High School Mind of Sabotage we'll look at first. It fires projectiles in a circle rather than just kind of firing them randomly. Uh, it fires additional projectiles for each prior mine in the detonation sequence, so how many mines exist before you hit detonate. And it gains critical strike chance instead of damage. This also focuses a lot more on mine aura effect. Which for people who aren't familiar with mine aura effect, which also kind of includes me, it basically is just a type of damage that they deal. And it mostly focuses on increasing the aura that they apply when they increase the critical strike chance against against enemies that uh, is added. So it focuses on increasing that rather than the flat damage of the skill itself. Then we have the Icicle Mine of Fanning. There was a mine that fires projectiles at enemies when detonated. These projectiles quickly dissipate as they travel. Fire an additional projectile for, for every two prior mines of the detonation sequence. Same thing. This one has a much smaller amount of critical strike chance per enemy hit. Or per each mine that hits an enemy. But actually, what's the benefit of that then? If it just... Well, this one does a lot more damage, which might be why it gives a lot more crit strike, or gives a lot less crit strike. Also doesn't have the aura effect that increases the critical strike chance that you gain per mine. This might be, this might scale better on gem levels, and this one might scale better on aura effect. I noticed that both of these have, have less added damage than, added damage effectiveness than the base one, which I think scales better on added damage. So I think we have bases increase you scale with added damage, fanning you scale with uh, gem levels, and sabotage with you scale with either projectiles or you scale with aura effect. So just different methods of doing the same thing for however you want to set up your build. This also means that the, our, the ice school mine of sabotage is, as is probably intended, going to work a lot better with the Saboteur Ascendancy because that has a massive aura effect mod in it, or mine specifically. And I think this scale, this, this skill basically scales off of its aura effect because the base damage is way lower, like almost half of this. Well, I guess saying almost half is a bit unrealistic. This one's 600 to 900 and this one is 400 to 600 damage for set or damage dealt with each hit so it's a lot lower so i guess what they're trying to do is increase the uh for each mine uh, it, applying the critical strike chance against enemies they're trying to increase that so you have like a really high crit chance rather than focusing on just dealing flat damage i'm working with that oh my gosh a lot of gems to go through we're almost done now infernal blow of immolation well, Immolation does more damage based on the Immolate support does more damage based on hitting burning targets, so... Attacks with your weapon applying a charge debuff to the to you the first time you hit an enemy with a skill. Upon reaching six charges or charges expiring, the charge debuff is removed, damage nearby enemies. So this one, it seems like you build up the charges rather than the enemies build charges on them and then the enemies explode versus this is just like you explode outwards which is kind of cool we have lancing steel of spraying lancing steel is a very much it shoots in a very straight line usually uh forms a cluster of shards in front of you the clusters will fire a number of projectiles in sequence aiming at enemies in front of or close to it so this one actually aims at enemies versus normal lancing steel just shoots directly in whatever direction you're pointing so that's kind of cool i believe it also has more projectiles it's after the first on each enemy deal 90 percent less damage oh that's strange maybe because it's the lancing steel is meant to spread out across a variety of enemies so it hits all of the enemies once maybe twice rather than the normal lancing steel which points at let's say a boss and just shreds it so I guess this is the mapping Lancing Steel versus the bossing Lancing Steel. Before we used to have to use Splitting Steel for for mapping, in my experiences, or Shattering Steel rather than Lancing, because those two map better than a direct damage to one particular thing. 
Leap Slam or Groundbreaking? So Leap Slam is usually just used as a damaging skill. Or just usually used as a travel skill, not a damaging skill. So... Jump a short distance through the air, damaging and knocking back enemies with your weapon where you land. Enemies you would land on are pushed out of the way. That's new. Okay. So the stun chance based on them always being on full life has always been there, but the pushing enemies out of the way, like knocking them back, that is new. Actually, I'm not sure if the stun chance on for enemies that are on full life was guaranteed before, but this there's already a lot of basis for Leap Slam being focused on stunning. So I guess this is basically, do you want your Sleep Slam to knock things back and stun them, or just stun them and also you don't really care because this is just a movement skill. <laughs> Next is Lightning Conduit of the Heavens. Lightning strikes the number of enemies around the targeted location. Cannot be supported by Kel's Spell Cascade. It's up to 16 enemies. I'm not as familiar with Lightning Conduit because it is still kind of a new skill and I haven't really played with it yet. Well, I say new, but it's probably been around for a couple of weeks now. I haven't really gotten to that one, so I'm not as familiar with it. I don't think it hits things... I don't think it hits as many things usually. I think it's a little bit less directed and does a little bit more damage. This might be the more of a mapping version. Then we have two lightning spires of zapping and of overloading. So this has a... the first one of zapping it has a lower damage amount than the second one. And it has a chance to trigger again and only strikes two areas around it when its lightning strike is dealt. So throw a trap, once triggered, it will repeatedly strike mul two areas around you for a duration dealing lightning damage. Versus overloading, which will repeatedly strike eight areas around you and also deal more damage. But the zapping has no cooldown and a cast time of one second. The Lightning Spire Trap Overloading has a cast time of 1 second, but a cooldown of 10 seconds. Wait. And a critical strike chance of 100%?! Uh, that- that's basically a Vault skill. That's crazy. That's- that's a big boom. <laughs> that- that's on the level of D Detonate Dead now. That's obscenely powerful, and... I think I could probably reduce that cooldown to like 5 seconds if I wanted to. This is another skill where you wouldn't even need to bother. Like, like, like you can't, you probably can't use this as a main skill because of the cooldown time. But you wouldn't even need to bother scaling crit chance. All you need to do is scale crit multi. Lightning Strike of Arcing. So it's just the normal lightning strike to scale. You imbue your weapon with lightning and you hit something. Except... This one, it chains up to nine times, which is pretty cool. So that's a little bit a little bit better for mapping, because usually you upgrade Lightning Strike by adding a bunch of extra strikes to it. So you can strike, let's say, five enemies at once versus the one that you usually start with. And this one, I think it's you don't have to focus as much on getting additional strikes you can focus more on chaining, because this scales on chaining. So, this is very much... They could they merge Lightning Strike and Arc together, which is... I mean, I guess that's why it's called of Arcing. That's pretty awesome. Okay, Lightning Tendrils. I don't know if anyone really uses this skill. It's a channeling skill, which is the reason why most people don't really use the skill, because unfortunately channeling skills tend to be quite weak. Just because... This game is meant to be a game where you move a lot. Channeling skills lock you in one place, generally. Which is why the only channeling skill that people really use is Cyclone. Which is the only channeling skill that allows you to move around, usually. So, Lightning Tendrils of Eccentricity and Lightning Tendrils of Escalation. So, this one gains Radius. The Escalation gains Radius as you channel it. It has a pretty big boom on it. It goes up to 1600 damage. And this one only goes up to 600 damage. But it re it's releases a strong pulse as it scales up. And it slowly gains more damage. And is more focused on crit, specifically. 
we have the mirror arrow ones, which we've seen a bit of the mirror arrow stuff. We have bombarding and we have prismatic. So the bombarding gives you uh, basically they they trigger rain of arrows, which is just they hit a whole ton in a wide area. Really good for culling strike if you want to use it, because basically it just throws in a clone and then the clone attacks. Simple as that. Prismatic clone, same thing. Throw down a, a clone, and then it attacks for you. Really useful when you have a build that can't do a particular ailment, uh, elemental ailment. This could allow you to shock to deal extra damage. It could allow you to chill and freeze to give you more survivability. It could allow you to ignite if, let's say, you have a fire damage skill that deals damage based on ignites but can't ignite itself. You know, that type of thing. Then finally, we have Molten Strike of the Zenith. It uses your two-handed weapon with Molten Energies to attack with physical and fire damage. This attack causes Balls of Molten Magma to launch forth from the enemies you hit, divided amongst all enemies hit by the strike. These will deal area da attack damage to enemies where they land. Every fifth time you attack with this skill, it fires more high-damaging projectiles. So usually, this just deals a... You hit things, it deals a base, throws a base number of projectiles out. It's that simple. This one shoots out less projectiles and then hits way more or in the fifth attack. I guess maybe this is a little bit better for mapping because you're going to hit a lot more stuff at once. This certainly would not be better for bossing because the balls bounce away from the first throw in the thing you're hitting. So I guess this is Molten Strike for if you want to map without adding a bunch of melee strike stuff to it. I like that. I think that's good. Okay, and that's Transfigured Gems Part 2.